Good day. For those of you who do not know us, we are professors Hiran Patel and Verna Dietl and Douglas Harder, the teaching staff of ECE 150. In this topic, we're going to look at local variables and an introduction to types. In this lesson, we will introduce the need for temporary memory storage, that is, local variables. We will show how we can get user input through console input. We will then use locally stored data in output, and we will introduce the appropriate terminology. Now, literal data, as we've seen before, must be hard-coded into the program before it is compiled. This is, of course, useless if the program is supposed to react to the real world. Now, for now, we're going to only accept input from the keyboard. However, you can also access data from, for example, the mouse, the hard drive, through a communication network, or th perhaps through sensors. Now, data that we access from somewhere else must be stored somewhere so we can access that value or refer to that value. We will use local variables for this. You've already heard the term variable in your math courses in secondary school. So for example, x squared plus 3x minus 4. x is a variable. It can take on different values. Well, the same thing in a programming language. A local variable can take on values. And we will see how we can temporarily store integers, characters, strings, floating point numbers, or floats, and Boolean values. Now, this is a program that allows the user to enter an integer when it is executed. Let's take a look at the different components. The first thing you notice is this line here, int n. This says to the compiler that the identifier n will be used to temporarily store an integer value. n is said to be a local variable to the function main. The identifier int is a keyword in the C++ language. It's reserved by C++ to allow you to specify that the identifier n, in this case, can store an integer value. We say that the keyword int describes the type of the local variable. In this case, it's an integer. We will say that we are declaring n to be of type int. And a variable must be declared before it is used. The line standard cin or standard console input to n says to the compiler, call an appropriate subroutine for, to wait for the user to enter an integer and then assign that value to the local variable n. The line standard console output, you entered n new line, says to the compiler, print the string you entered, print the value stored in the local variable n, and then go to the start of the next line. Suppose you now compile this program and then execute it. You will see the following. The first thing to happen is that enter an integer is printed to the screen. This now allows you, the user, to type in a number. Having done so, you can press enter and the text you entered, whatever value you did enter, print it to the screen, and it goes to the next line, and now the function main returns and the program is finished execution. Now, this program here allows you to locally store a character. So here we see ch is, or is declared, as a char. The line char ch says to the compiler the identifier ch 
will be used to temporarily store a character. Specifically, it's an ASCII character. The identifier char is, like int, a keyword in C++, and we say the type of ch is char. The following program is slightly different. This program allows the user to enter a string of characters. So this is slightly different. Here we see str declared to be of type standard string. This says to the compiler the identifier str will be used to temporarily store an instance of a string class. Now this is something that we're going to see later on in the course. However, at this point, you can simply understand that somehow this local variable str is capable of storing a sequence of characters. And then when we print out that local variable, it will be printed out as that given sequence of characters. So the symbol standard double colon string consists of the namespace std and the identifier string. And so we say the type of str is standard string. This program allows the user to enter a floating point number or float. The line double expected salary says to the compiler that the identifier expected salary will be used to temporarily store a float. The identifier double is itself a keyword like int and char. And so we say the type of expected salary is double. And here we are declaring expected salary to be of type double. The name double is short for double precision floating point number. And as you can expect, there is also a single precision floating point number, which we will see later. The following program allows the user to enter a Boolean value. Now, the Boolean literals are true and false, but we can't use those here. Instead, the user must enter either a 0 or 1, and so we will prompt the user to enter either a 0 or 1. The line bool does enjoy Monty Python says to the compiler, the identifier does enjoy Monty Python is declared to be of type bool, that is, a Boolean value. The type tells the compiler how a particular value is to be stored in memory. Now, we will see later how these are actually stored in memory, but for now, as an example, type int allows you to store in memory any integer between these two numbers inclusive. These temporary local variables are lost when the function main exits. We will later see how we can modify, use these local variables and the scope of such variables. So following this lesson, you now understand why we need local variables in programs, because we may want to store temporary data which we've accessed or created or you are using during the execution of a program. We know that each local variable has a type and must be declared before that local variable is used. We know how to get data from the keyboard and assign that value to a local variable, and we know how to refer to the value that is stored in a local variable. Here are the references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers.